I want to talk about death. After all, most of us think about it at least once a day. I lost a bunch of people when I was younger and really struggled with the entire concept. There were a few years there when I was going to funerals way too often for people who left us way too early and under tragic circumstances. I suspect many of you can relate. Years ago, when I was wrestling with the death of a friend of mine, it hit me. Why am I so upset? It's not me that died. I remember saying those words through a barrage of tears to my father as he looked on sympathetically. That thought, simplistic and nonsensical as it was at the time, was a seed that grew and changed, and after time, it really allowed me to redefine my relationship with death. Now, before we continue, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed. I'm having a blast putting these videos together, and it wouldn't be near as fun without you. Thank you. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm actively growing this channel, and I'd love for you to be part of the conversation. Moving on. I'm writing this as of September 2020, hip deep in a once in a century pandemic and staring down a potential second wave. We've lost so many, and you may have found this video seeking solace. I want to say that you have my deepest sympathies. I know what you're struggling with is hard, no doubt, and I want you to know that the sadness you are feeling, right now, is a manifestation of the love you harbor. It's going to be okay. Death, with no exceptions, is an experience that we will all share. Dying is not a unique experience, at all. In fact, it is the most ubiquitous experience we have, and paradoxically, I question whether it even exists. I see cycles everywhere, not death. Our relationship with death is molded by the society around us, and that society has a distorted, illusionary relationship with the concept. I think the Western world's relationship with the concept is destructive and feeds fear, and fear is an irrational emotion. Therefore, the fear of death is irrational. But irrational or not, we are irrational beings, and we still struggle with it because it is scary. But where does that fear come from? Our relationship with death is influenced by our religious beliefs, pop culture, and news cycle, among other things. You'll never see a headline, everyone is fine, scores of people have a great day. No, the headlines are always influenced by this one popular journalistic credo. If it bleeds, it leads. We love bad news, and journalists are more than happy to serve up more than our fair share of it. It's because we humans evolved, needing to know the bad news circulating around our village. It kept us safer and taught us important survival lessons, kept us alive. But I feel we've evolved past the need for this fear, and our obsession with bad news is an evolutionary leftover that can be dispensed with. It plays with the most primitive parts of our nature, and our primitive parts are, well, primitive. But there is no escaping the bad news cycle. When a celebrity shuffles off this mortal coil, we scream it from the rooftops, and many gorge themselves with every detail. I remember where I was, when for the first time, I heard the words, Michael Jackson is dead. I have a similar memory of when we lost B.B. King. It shocks you. I'm not even that huge of a B.B. King fan. I love his simple yet lush pentatonic riffs, and watching him play was always fun. His fingers were so fat, sometimes it looked like they barely moved, yet amazing riffs always sprung to life. Hardest working guitar player out there, hands down. But I digress. It's hard not to think fearfully about death when we are constantly bombarded with news of it, and it is almost exclusively presented as tragedy. Don't get me wrong, there are many tragedies out there and I'm not downplaying those, but it goes a long way when managing news of these tragedies to think about them within the context of your own life. Whenever I get weirded out by the news cycle, I always look to my family and the people I care about and love and remind myself that they are temporary and to be grateful to have them with me at this point in my journey. I've taken those terrifying headlines and turned them into an opportunity to practice being grateful. I hack the news feed. It takes some practice, but you can too. Our entertainment, our pop culture, treats death as the worst possible outcome in any scenario. It plays on our fears to keep us watching, nervous, and questioning our own mortality. My kids notice that practically every protagonist in a Disney movie has a dead mom. From Bambi to Cinderella to Lilo and Stitch, dead moms aplenty. It appears to be a true Disney protagonist. First you need a mom that bit the dust way too early. It's then that we can get to the song and dance portion of the show. How death is portrayed in Hollywood is one of the things that led me to distrust Hollywood in general. The way they approach the concept is so manipulative, negative and destructive, and they know full well what kind of influence they have on the masses. I believe the extent of that influence is their best kept secret, but I don't want to get conspiratorial. My point, if the majority of exposure you have to the concept of death is told through a media lens, then you have a skewed perception of the concept, and if your perception is negative and fearful, then maybe changing up your media diet would save you some suffering. It worked for me. Now, 
When I say that death is an experience we will all share, I am making a gross understatement. Let's stop calling it death for a second, and call it cycling. Cycling is all around us. Without it, life is impossible. Reality is impossible. We can recognize cycles occurring at the microscopic level, and our very universe may be cycling through an infinite series of big bangs and big crunches. The leaves on the trees, river otters, the water in our atmosphere, everything is locked into a cycle. I think about that whenever existential dread tries to creep in. I am not alone in this ordeal. In fact, our mortality is one of the things that connects us to literally everything. Everything is on the same journey. We truly are, and we're doing it together. When I think of death in this context, it strips death of all meaning and exposes it as an illusion. Many believe in an afterlife, and I count myself as one of them. Death is just another step in the cycle. There was a time in my life when it was impossible for me to even fathom an afterlife. I was a hardened materialist, and nothing was going to change my mind. I believed the science, and then a ton of the science started pointing to a theoretical afterlife in a few different scenarios. My point. People's spiritual beliefs many times are a place of strength. I have a few bones to pick with organized religion too. I think we all do. But I've seen people endure incredible hardships and stay grounded thanks to their faith. That's a demonstration of real strength. Now, grieving a lost one is important, but like the sadness that you feel, it's a manifestation of love, and that's a beautiful thing. Tough, but beautiful. In closing, your relationship with death is molded by the society around you, and that society has a distorted, illusionary relationship with the concept of death. We can choose to change that. Thank you for listening. If you like my work, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And remember, this ride is not without risk. Be careful out there and take care.